Hey, I finally get to make a video about Kyle Dubas with Kyle Dubas news in it. The Toronto Maple Leafs have named Kyle Dubas their 17th GM. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you've been here a while, you probably have some questions. Very briefly on me, because the topic of this video is obviously Kyle Dubas. You probably noticed that it's a little bit echoey and I took most of the stuff off the walls. I just hung up the jerseys and that's because we're repairing the basement. The cracks in the foundation that were causing the leaks are fixed. Today we planned on taking out the rest of the drywall and doing a dump run. After several days of taking out drywall and trying to get a couch up the stairs and ripping up carpet, I realized mm, I can't really walk. Went to the doctor, lumbar strain, it's a recovery of six to eight weeks. Fun! So instead of the usual blue bouncy ball, I got my Leafs chair right here. And in between jump cuts, I'm probably gonna stand up so my back doesn't seize. I just turned 30 and I'm already old. So imagine how old 31 year old Kyle Dubas feels. So without saying if this is a good or a bad thing, because really none of us know, I will say I'm excited. Dude, the richest team in hockey has a 31 year old as their general manager. I remember like six and a half years ago, he was the 25 year old GM of the Sioux Greyhounds and everyone's like, is he too young for this job? Life comes at you fast. On the podcast, I've been talking about the whole young versus old thing. I don't know if I've always done the greatest job of it. Some people have said insulting things about having a younger person in charge. And likewise, I've probably said some things about older people being in charge. And in terms of thinking, your age doesn't really matter. You can be young and have an old mindset and you can be old and have a young mindset. With Dubis, what I'm excited for is to see something new. You're going to hear a lot of people talking about, oh, well, hockey's not playing on a spreadsheet and analytics and wagging their finger. It's not all about Corsi and PDO and zone entries and goals for expected and all that. One thing Dubis has talked about a number of times is inefficiencies. Basically, things that a lot of hockey teams aren't doing that they ought to be doing. A team that has done a really good job of exploiting market inefficiencies? The Pittsburgh Penguins. A team that has a lot of money locked up and a few star players. Stop me if you've heard this before. That's going to be the Leafs very soon is what I'm trying to say. And what they've been really good at doing is getting guys from the U.S. college system. Jake Gensel, third round pick. Brian Russ, third round pick. Connor Sherry, a signing. The Marlies, and therefore the Leafs, have a guy named Trevor Moore, who I'm pretty sure Kyle Dubas dug up, and he just might make the Leafs next year. College, the American Hockey League, even the East Coast Hockey League, Russia, Sweden, Finland, Austria, Switzerland, all these places have players that can play in the NHL. Teams need to find them. There was a player drafted in the fifth round in 2010 by the Florida Panthers. Didn't feel like signing with the Panthers, so he was traded. That player's name is Zach Hyman. And a few years ago when I got to interview Kyle Dubas for the Toronto Star, I wrote something for them a few years ago, and also Sheldon Keefe, who's the Marlies head coach right now, and he's doing pretty well, I asked who's the most underrated forward and who's the most underrated defender. For defender, they said some guy who was signed to an AHL contract. I didn't think much of it at the time. That guy ended up being Mr. Two Goals in Two Games, Justin Hall. And the underrated forward on a team that had Nylander and Leipzig and Kapanen and Soshnikov was Zach Hyman. And now what does he do for the Leafs besides everything? I'm surprised they didn't name Zach Hyman GM. The Leafs signed Kyle Dubas to be their assistant GM a few years ago because they thought he knew about hockey. So while I think he's going to try some new things, I have a hard time believing he's going to completely reinvent the wheel. But I think Dubas said it best himself in the press conference talking about learning from Lou Lamorello. He obviously learned some things about hockey. It's Lou Lamorello. But what it sounds like he took the most from Lou was being the boss. Being the general manager of a hockey team, it's not just good enough to know loads about hockey and understand the sport. You need to understand people. And as a guy who was still in his 20s when he started with this team, that's something he could have used. Anyone watching this in their teens or 20s, have you ever tried getting your point across in a room full of 40, 50, and 60 year olds? Now whether what you had to say was even good or not, that's open to interpretation. But for a lot of folks, your opinion didn't count before it came out of your mouth. Now Lou Lamorello did not have that problem as Leafs GM because he's been in his 70s since he got the job. Now on the reverse side, some people might just dismiss your opinion because you're a little older and while that is it's true, uh, not in hockey. No, no, the older and longer the hockey resume, the better. I gotta put a bunch of links down below, but there's a great clip that was uploaded by Flintor on Twitter. It's Mike Babcock talking about Kyle Dubas, and it doesn't sound recent. I'm not sure when it's from. Here's what he says, and I'll even do it in his voice. Every decade, I believe they get that much smarter. I'm 52, so a guy who's 32 today, to me, is two decades smarter. Now, that doesn't have to be a hard and fast rule, but I know exactly what he's saying. Do we talk about it with hockey? Since the 0506 lockout, this game has changed in leaps and bounds. There was a generation of players, like good players, who were not ready to be done, who under the new rules were 
done. They washed out. The game has changed immensely since 2004, I guess, when that lockout began. And if you look around the league, how many teams have someone in charge who started their career in hockey before 2004? How many of them completely failed to adapt? How many of them were decently flexible, but they partially failed to adapt? How many adapted pretty well? And how many are on the cutting edge? We talk about it with players all the time, with McDavid, Matthews, Line A. These guys are killing it. I mean, they're powerful, they're strong, they're fast, they're skilled, that's why they're good. But also, the new rules aren't new to them. They're just the rules. Maybe in the same fashion, some of the new thinking things people think about Kyle Dubas, it's not new to him, it's just thinking. So whether you're a Leafs fan or not, if Dubas has some success as the Leafs GM and the sport evolves further, that's just a good news for hockey. It's a good news if you like watching it, playing it, everything. So for the opinion aspect of it, yeah, I'm just straight up happy that the Leafs named Dubas their GM. One, it can bust out the glasses and do impression videos again. Two, I just think he'll be good at it. And three, once again, and I've said it a few times, this whole Hunter Dubas, Hunter Dubas, maybe a guy on the outside thing. A few years ago, the Leafs said the plan was for Dubas to be the GM. Lou Lamorello straight up said verbatim, if Dubas isn't ready in three years, it'll be his fault. Three years later, after finishing in last place, they made the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons, and the guy who they said they wanted to be GM in three years is the GM. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that was a plan going according to plan. In terms of Mark Hunter, I hope he stays, and I think by hearing him talk, it was clear that Shanahan definitely hopes he stays, and probably Dubas too. Now, I don't know what Hunter's actually thinking. At the time of making this video, nothing's actually been announced, but it's insulting to him, I think, what some of the people are saying about what he might be thinking. Could he ever take orders from Kyle Dubas? Like, no one's ever had a younger boss who was good. And, if they do butt heads, like, butting heads has to be the end of your hockey relationship. Said it before, I'll say it again. The rumor was at the 2015 draft. It was Mark Hunter getting into a heated debate over who the Leafs should draft with Mike Babcock. It's okay to have different opinions in the same room. If you have five or six people in the same room who have the same opinion about everything, how many people do you actually have in the room? If there's one thing the hockey world could use and the entire world in general could use, it's a diversity of opinion. So what are the Leafs actually going to look like now that Dubas is GM? Well, that's a great question. Are they going to have beards? Are they going to name a captain? Are they going to trade players away? Are they going to bring players in? Are they going to sign Big Fish? What does this mean for John Tavares? Matthews and Marner can sign a new contract this summer, and Nylander has to sign a new contract this summer. Is the team going to get smaller, softer? I don't believe that for a second. I do believe they're going to get faster. I don't think they're intentionally going to be like, we're not going to hit anyone. I think you want to develop a team that's fast enough and skilled enough and smart enough that they have the puck all the time so they don't have to hit. But when the other team does have the puck and they do try to cross your blue line, you want to make him regret ever trying it. What are they going to do with the draft in June? Because unlike a few years ago, he's not a little bit in charge of the draft. He's not half in charge of the draft. He is in charge of the draft. Are the Leafs going to talk more in the media? It was so nice seeing Kyle Dubas talk. I forgot like what a decent quote he is. Hopefully that doesn't mean they get more leaky. And I don't think it would be him leaking things. I think that there's a fear in the organization of saying anything because Lou Lamorello might shank you in the neck, which is why it's good that, at the moment, he's still here, by the way. And will Brendan Shanahan let Kyle Dubas do his job? Like, look, at the end of the day, Brendan Shanahan is Kyle Dubas' boss. Within reason, your boss gets to tell you what to do at your job. That's kind of the thing about being a boss. The Matthews contract, the Nylander contract, the Marner contract, those things combined are probably going to be like $200 million. So yeah, you might want to get the president to consult with about that. It's good to get guidance, of course. It's great to get a variety of opinions, of course. But the leader needs to be the leader. There's a lot of other things. I wonder what the team is going to do with new initiatives. Are game ops going to change at all? What are they going to do in the community? Are they going to do some new things, some new interesting things? Who's he going to hire? It's not like he's the GM, he got the new keys to the truck, and he's not going to add a few bells and whistles to the thing. Even if you don't add spinners to it, yeah, a little air freshener thing. And last thing the nonsense. You're going to hear some things about Dubas and oh, he couldn't possibly be up to the job. And for the most part, it's going to be nonsense. If you want to call nonsense nonsense, that's very noble of you, fine. But for the most part, I think it's worth ignoring. At the same time, you're going to have a lot of people defending everything Dubas does and giving him the benefit of the doubt in everything. If I'm ever that person or the other person, let me know. I know I didn't need to tell you that, but the comment box is still down below. The truth is somewhere in the middle. So, 
what do you think of Kyle Dubas getting hired as the Leafs' new GM? Forget what stories surrounding this news annoy you. What has interested you? I'll definitely be adding a bunch of Sportsnet stuff down below. There's, there's a lot. Just let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how you're feeling. <sighs> All right, that was relatively painless. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. They've done a lot of stuff in the centennial ceremonies about ushering in a new era. Here's one right here, right in front of you. Kyle Dubas.